Hello everybody, welcome to our Cake Food Master Series. I'm Amelia Carbine. I am your host and your demonstrator today. Uh, I have something really fun for you guys today. I, I, I hope that you like it. It's kind of a kind of a trendy, cool, you know, artsy thing. So I hope that you guys enjoy it. Um, for those of you that don't know who I am, uh, I'm Amelia Carbine. I uh, somewhat run Cake Foo. I, we've got a team, but uh, I, I kind of am the face behind Cake Foo. I have been decorating cakes for the 14 years, I believe, um, and I, I love I love it. I I couldn't imagine doing anything else because it 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 really combines all of the different um, arts, and I'm I'm a very artsy you know kind of person and creative, you know, that's my brain. And so I, I love to be able to take, you know, painting and sculpting and, and baking and, you know, all those different, you know, artsy, crafty, hands-on kinds of things and, and turn them into, uh, turn them into, you know, cake. Who doesn't love cake? <laughs> all right, so, um, I wanted to start off by telling you guys that I'm going to be teaching you something pretty fun, I think. It is uh, painting with ganache. And I, I'm sure that you guys have all heard of cocoa painting and you know things like that, but this is actually done with um, palette knives. Uh, these palette knives here are... Um, I've got several different kinds. I just bought these at um, my local craft store, Michael's. So um, there's, I have four different shapes. So I don't know what they're technically called, <laughs> but there's this one here with the just a broad and, and a sharp edge. Um, this one right here. Oh, I need to change the camera angle. I am so sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I just got a, a yeah. Bobby came in and said, change the camera angle. I am so sorry. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I'm Amelia. Hi. <laughs> okay. So anyway, these are the these are the palette knives. And um, so yeah, one with a an angle right here, one with uh, you know it. It kind of looks like a, a cake spatula, but it's really thin. And it's got a, kind of a pointy edge, but not completely. This one right here, uh, more angled, has a very pointy edge. And then this one is kind of like this one, but it has, you know. Yeah, so technical terms, I don't know them. And I'm still getting used to what they all do, because this is kind of new to me as far as I've, I've never done palette painting on canvas before. I've only done it on cake. And so I, I don't know if it transfers all that well, but I actually saw um, I actually saw a picture of a painting that I'm going to show you guys. I think it's super cool. Um, here we go. This right here was kind of my, oh my gosh, I've got to be able to put that on cake. Uh, it was so, so cool. And um, and so I've got, I, I went out and bought all the palette knife stuff and uh, just messed around as much as I could with it. And, you know, so it's, it's something that I, I've never seen it done on cake before. And I don't, I don't know if it has been or not, but this is my my take on it. So, yeah, um, I'm going to show you guys a little bit of how this works, um, and so so that you guys know, um, we have a a new thing with Cake Fu. Um, it's it's really exciting. I think uh, I kind of announced it last weekend uh, at. Uh, at the Austin That Takes the Cake show. Um, unfortunately, our audio was terrible. Um, we had to sacrifice the audio in order to get going even, and uh, I apologize for that. Hopefully, hopefully some of you got something out of that. Um, but yeah, so we have 
a, a new CakeFu membership that we are starting. And it's called CakeFu Gold. And it's going to be really cool because uh, it, we're going to release one video uh, a, a month. It's going to be 12 videos a year that you guys are going to be able to, to watch. And they're, they're, they're you know, extended long classes um, and in-depth uh, you know, teaching and learning. So uh, it's, it's going to be really cool, I think. <laughs> uh, as of right now, we have uh, the long stem rose class that I taught um, and I have had on our uh, website for a little while, uh, but it's uh, now part of that membership. You can still go on and purchase the classes if you want to separately, but uh, each each class is going to be you know in the thirty forty dollar range. And uh, so if you buy the membership, it's going to be uh, $99 for a year, or you can actually pay a monthly membership, uh, sign up you know, for monthly payments kind of a thing. And so you'll end up getting the, the videos you know, regularly, and they'll be a lot less expensive. So uh, I, I highly recommend the membership over purchasing the classes. Um, and uh, there's a few other perks that go along with it. We are going to offer, or I'm going to offer uh, one free uh, mentor session with anybody who signs up with a membership. Uh, so basically, it's a one-on-one. -on -one. We jump online, and um, you can ask me any questions about cake. It can be business-related. It can be technique-related. You know, it can be, you know, anything cake-related. And so uh, if I have the answer, I'll share it with you. <laughs> I'll do my best. So that's uh, one thing that's included in the membership, which I think is really pretty cool. I think that a lot of people like to have access to, you know, people who have been in the industry for, you know, a long time and, and kind of know what they're, what they're doing. And I, I feel like I kind of have that. So <laughs> um, I... I'm not one to talk myself up very much, but um, but yeah, I I think that I have the the background for it. Uh, so anyway, that's uh, the membership, and uh, we're actually going to be giving away a free membership today. And uh, we've had a few people that we we um, uh, gave out awards last uh, last weekend at the cake show, and um, hope hope that people are taking advantage of that. And uh, if not, make sure you look for your certificate that you got and, and sign up for that membership. Okay, so, oh, and um, here, I'll share a link with you guys. It should be down below the screen also, but um, here, I will show you guys this link. It's just cakefoo.com forward slash r forward slash gold. So that's uh, where you'll go to be able to pay for either the yearly membership or the, the monthly membership. So, um, yeah, hope you guys uh, like that. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to go on and uh, move on to our, our uh, ganache painting here. Um, I, I guess I've, I've been calling it palette knife ganache painting, something like that. Um, it's always fun naming a technique because <laughs> you don't know exactly what to call it sometimes. But okay, back to this picture. I I looked very in depth at this picture and how you know she accomplished this, and I saw that with her palette knife she was scraping you know paint onto um, from a palette onto this knife and then scraping it onto her surface. And I thought, okay, so with cake, you're going to need to be able to do this, but not ruin the, the surface of the cake. And so I thought, what, how can I accomplish this? And my thinking was, the best way to do this, I think, would be with ganache, because you can refrigerate it, get it nice and solid, and uh, you can, you know, if it starts to get solid, um, you can you can, you know, uh, 
put it or not solid. If it starts to soften, you can just throw it back in the fridge again, and uh, everything will be good again. So, um, and and I I decided that a ganache. You know, there's different levels of ganache. You can have uh, a really solid ganache or a really soft ganache, and it depends on the way that you, um, either the way that you uh, make the ganache or the way that you heat the ganache. And so what I've done is I have taken this ganache, and the way that I made it was a 3 to 1 ratio. Um, and some of it was actually almost a two to one ratio. So it really depends on the type of chocolate that you use. And I'm um, I'm not, you know, really that uh, versed in all of the different types of chocolate. I haven't gone through all the different types of chocolate and, and tested things out. Um, I do know that the the Wilton candy melts work just fine. In fact, that's what these are. Um, I bought chocolate from uh, Chef Rubber. I bought, um, you know, their their nice white chocolate. They've got big packages of it, which I love. And um, I've I've bought uh, oh oh I can't think of the brand. The really nice one. Oh dang it. Anyway, really expensive brands of chocolate work really well too. But the ratios are going to change. <coughs> I'm sorry, you guys. I hope I don't. Uh, cough too much throughout this. Um, yeah, so the ratios change throughout all the different types of chocolate. So it's uh, either one one part chocolate, one part cream. Uh, that's a good, you know, pouring ganache consistency. Or two parts ganache, one part uh, cream. That's pretty good for doing a, like a whipped ganache for covering a cake. Uh, and of course, like I said, you need to you know play with the ratios a little bit. If it's too stiff, uh, once it comes to room temperature to whip, then um, then you'll want to add a little bit of you know warm it up again, add a little bit more warm cream, and let it sit again. There's there's ways to to work around it. Um, so if you do it wrong and it's the wrong ratios, you don't have to throw it out. Um, Anyway, so onto this. This was uh, three parts chocolate, uh, actually Wilton candy melts, and uh, one part of the uh, yeah cream. <laughs> Sometimes I lose words. So one part cream, and it makes a very pretty stiff uh, consistency. And so what I have here is I have a heating pad. And this heating pad is softening up my ganache so that when I paint with it, it's going to, I can have a nice soft ganache. I also have with me a hair dryer so that if it's still too uh, stiff, I can, you know, kind of heat the surface a little bit. Uh, you could probably use a torch, but I wouldn't recommend that because, well, I just hit it really soft. Hit it really soft if you're going to do that. But a hair dryer does a good job of, of you know, heating it up just a little bit. Uh, my hair dryer has settings so that it can be warm, it can be cold, um, and I just have mine on the the warm setting right here, right in the middle. I don't know if you can see. I have three settings on my heat, and then there's three settings on um, high or low. So I can be blowing a lot of air or just a little bit of air. So I have it on a low uh, air and a medium heat, a warm heat. So um, if you're going to invest in a hair dryer for stuff like this, you know, that's probably a good one to use. All right. Um, all right. Oh, and by the way, it's a good one to use for hair, too. <laughs> it's a good type to use for hair. I've, I've always gone to this Conair brand. Just, just a little plug for Conair because I love them. Um, okay, so we are going to start here. And oh, here, let me show you guys. This is uh, what I threw together for this training. Um, I, I will show you guys how to do this on a cake in my next class in the membership. So um, we're going to do a whole entire cake, and I think it's going to be really cool. 
hopefully you guys uh, like that. So anyway, here is what we're going to be showing you today. It's it's not going to be a perfect flower. That's not what we're going for. What we want is to have um, just kind of a really artsy, uh, mm, contemporary type of type of look to it. We don't want to have. I mean, there's ways to make gorgeous flowers. You can, you know, you can uh, make them out of gum paste, out of wafer paper, out of you know, even buttercream flowers are, you know, fairly nice. But these I want to look just really rough and just paint it. You know, so, um, so yeah, that's what we're going to uh, show you guys today. Uh, so this, I have done a little bit of a background, and uh, we've done that with a palette knife, and then I'm going to show you guys how to do the flowers. So, all right, we've got our palette of pinks. And I'm going to use uh, different colors of pinks. Um, in fact, I'm going to show you guys another one that I did. I, I just threw this one together this morning. I didn't even finish all the flowers. But this one has, um, I've started with darks and worked my way down to lights as I go. And so this, this dark up here, I've used like a combination of this dark pink with, you know, kind of a medium brownish pink. And then I move on to, you know, mixing in, you know, the brownish pink with the lighter pink. And then I'll move into, you know, the light pink with the white. And so it, it just kind of, uh, sorry, gradually moves its way down. Um, and so you can do that on a cake. You can do that, you know, on a cake board. I don't, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but um, that was just one, one way of doing things. So I've got four different colors here. I'm going to kind of mix and match, blend them together a little bit so that it, you know, just looks like, a, you know, an oil painting kind of with, you know, palette knife oil painting. So here is our, um, our ganache. If you can see, it's really kind of a soft. When, when it's uh, sat at room temperature, it's going to be a lot more solid. If you do the three to one ratio, it's going to be really, really solid, um, almost like a, um, almost like a what's it called a um, truffle uh, filling, you know, like a, the center of a truffle. It's going to be nice and stiff like that. So, but I have this sitting on a heating pad on a medium heat, so that it can, um, so that it can soften a little bit. Okay, so, and I always have paper towels handy. Paper towels are our friend. Okay, so I'm going to mix up all of these, make sure that we're nice and, and soft with all of them. Having these sit like this, the tops are a little bit more firm than the bottom. And if you're not getting it to mix very well, that's what the hair dryer is for. We're going to turn on the hair dryer. Hope you guys can hear me over this. Okay, we're going to turn on the hair dryer. Let it go for just a second over the tops of these. And until you can see just a tiny bit of gloss. Okay. Oops. This is a really cold. This room is cold. I'm sorry. Turn it up. This room is cold. Okay, and I'm melting my <laughs> melting my other one. Um, with this, you really, uh, with at least the the surface part, you really can't get it too thin, because like I said, you're doing this on the surface of a cake, and so it needs to be um, it needs to be pretty soft because you don't want to be you know, digging into your cake or, you know, messing up your cake. But if you have a ganached cake and uh, it's been sitting in the fridge for a little while, then you should be good. Um, you can see that it's a little bit on the grainy side on this one because it's been sitting in the air for a little while, but we're just going to mix it, blend it together, and it will be just fine, especially for what we need it for. And wipe this off so I can not mess up my white. Okay. All 
All right, and I'm going to throw on my... Okay, so now that we have all of our colors nice and soft and mixed up, we're going to start on... I'm going to move this here really fast. I had it melting too much, so I had to move it. Okay, so now to start on our cake surface. So we're going to take uh, our palette knife that has this uh, edge, the angled edge right here, and we're going to start taking, um, if you can see on this one, I started with a, a, like a darker pink on the inside, oops, sorry, darker pink on the inside where the flowers are going to be, and then I worked my way a little bit lighter towards the outside. Um, and so, and if you can see, this one is totally just random. I've just kind of, you know, different angles, scrape it wherever. So what we're going to do is take our dark pink and we're going to take some of this and we're going to mix it in a little bit with our kind of brownish pink. hope you guys can see this. Okay, so then we're going to take our palette knife, let's scrape off a little bit of that, and we're going to take it and we're just going to start, just going to start scraping. And um, the cleaner your edge of your palette knife is, the better. Um, if you've got all this gunk on it, you're going to have jagged edges when you start um, when you start putting it onto your cake surface. And so you want to make sure that it's pretty clean. This is going to be kind of hard to. Do. Well, maybe I'll move things so that I can do. Um, yeah, so I can keep my palette knife or my palette on the surface. And okay, so can you guys see that? I hope. Uh, I'll hold it up. I'll just have to be skilled here. <laughs> okay, so I'm just scraping off a little bit onto my palette knife, and uh, then I'm just going to start and kind of just push and squish and pull. Okay, and that is going to give us the different uh, angles and uh, kind of paint strokes, paint streaks, I guess, uh, with this palette knife. I'm just going to kind of go randomly wherever we feel like it because this is very artsy and contemporary and it doesn't really matter. So if you can see we have a few little of the darker brownish pinkish streaks inside of that and I'm just going to kind of add wherever I feel like adding and so there you go. Um, now that I've got a nice solid, or not solid, a nice you know, middle, we're going to take our uh, palette knife, clean it off, and then we're going to move on to kind of a lighter color. So we're going to mix in our, um, the lighter pink with our brownish pink. And, um, and I'm actually going to mix in a little bit of this darker pink too, just to get kind of, um, a, uh, what's what's the word I'm looking for? Gradual. I want it to be gradual, but more of the lighter pink than of the the darker. So my palette needs to be bigger. Sorry guys, I I loaded it full because I didn't want to run out in the middle of the training. <laughs> so uh, when you do your palettes, you don't need to load them that full. So okay, so we're gonna go on and keep going, and we're just gonna kind of keep pulling, keep you know kind of smash and, and move out. The reason why you want to have your ganache nice and thin is when you're doing this kind of smashing motion, you, you want to be able to get a nice uh, smooth and not very thick coat. Um, but if you have it too thick, it's going to be really hard to do on a cake. That's when you're going to start cutting into cracking open your ganache or breaking through your fondant or, or your whatever surface you decide to do this on. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's not very heavy that, that I'm doing. I'm not going all that heavy. So here we go. It's just going to kind of keep going and do outward motions. And then I'm going to move to our light pink and a little bit of white to kind of uh, bring it all out into... Sorry, my... This was a lot easier to do at home <laughs> when I wasn't trying to be in front of a camera. Okay. 
All right, so here we go. We've got kind of a light pink and white that we're going to finish off. I'm going to kind of do angle this way, angle that way, and kind of bring it down. And I'm going to kind of get in here. I didn't like that a little bit, so we're just going to cover that up and do it again. And okay, so I'm not going to mess with this too much. You guys get the idea. Um, you can blend it more or whatever. I yeah. So then onto the flower. Um, you really want to kind of work fast with the the background and the flower because uh, if you let this set, it's going to be uh, kind of rough when you're trying to add in your flowers. So right now it's still kind of soft. It's not terribly soft. I probably should have done this faster. But um, you want it to be somewhat soft so that when you start adding your flowers, um, it your your flower um, stuff, your ganache for your flower isn't going to catch on all the edges of, of the surface because it is kind of a jagged, un, unlevel kind of surface. And that's hard to, to work with the, you know, with that. Okay, so we're going to move on to our uh, flower colors here. And I've taken a white, and I've got a little bit of yellow, a little bit of brown, and a little bit of green. So the green is for the stem, and we can add in a little bit of uh, green into the flower, but we're actually going to kind of mix these colors also so that we have kind of a yellowish to brownish kind of center of our flower uh, because I think that's kind of cool so that it's not all one color and that just adds to the, you know, kind of a painted effect. All right, so I've got this mixed, it's fairly soft. Gonna mix our mix our brown a little bit. My brown was really really soft, so we may not use very much of that, if any at all. Okay, and there's some yellow. I'm gonna hit that with a hair dryer really fast. Like I said, just till you see kind of a gloss, it really is cold in this room. So if you're in a cold room, you'll need to do that. If you're in a nice warm room, you may not need to do this at all. It, it just all depends. So Okay, so there's our yellow and our green. Okay. And this is where we're going to start playing with different palette knives. It's going to be kind of fun to mess around with a, a few different knives. Okay, and I'm going to show you two different flowers that I that I do. Um, there are some really serious, amazing palette knife painting out there. Uh, I saw a rose that was done with a palette knife um, that that I will show you guys that that is really amazing. So, okay, we've got. We're going to do the stem of the of the row, or of the flowers first, because well, I guess you could add them in later. In fact, in, on this one cake, I did add them in later, but um, I'm going to do the stem first anyway, <laughs> because that's kind of fun. Okay, so with this one, we're going to take our our angled, pointed, you know, spatula here. Um, and we're going to just kind of dig into it just a little bit and kind of uh, drag it a little. Make sure that it's a nice, clean edge. Uh, you don't want a bunch of goopy paint hanging off the edge. I don't know if you can see that. So just barely a little bit. And then we're going to kind of uh, take this and we're going to drag a little bit. And um, my green is pretty pretty stiff still. I would do it a little bit more thin, but I don't want to bore you guys with a hairdryer action the whole time. 
And uh, okay, so we're going to add in one more stem because I'm going to do two flowers on this. And um, oh, here we're going to we're going to go at a different angle. So I'm going to grab the grab the ganache with the other side of our palette knife. Okay, and then we're going to kind of go like this. And again, my green is very stiff. Usually it can go on a lot smoother if, you, if it's not quite so stiff. But that's okay because, again, we're going for artsy and we're going for, you know, imperfect. That's what we're going for. Okay, so now I'm going to throw in a leaf really fast, show you guys how a leaf is done. We're going to take our green, we're going to scrape it on both sides so that there's um, nice... I don't know if you can see that. You can see there's some covering the whole back, nothing on the front. Okay, and then we're going to take our palette knife and we're going to just kind of swipe it this way. And that's going to create our leaf. And we'll do that again for a leaf over on the other side. I won't bore you with a ton of leaves. I'm doing on this side, right about there. Okay, so there's our leaves. It's really easy, really simple. Oh, I gotta throw in one more. Gotta do odd. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, there you go. There's our leaves. All right, and then we're going to take our um, little angled palette knife here, and I really do have to warm up this white a little bit. It's not gonna. So, okay, so yeah, it, it the flower part, the petals, you want it to be pretty soft. Otherwise, you're going to end up with, you know, jagged and all that kind of stuff. So, make it soft again. Okay, like I said, you don't have to load your palette as full as I do. That I didn't want to have to be jumping up to grab more paint throughout the training. So, okay. So we're going to take our palette knife now, and we're going to do this, uh, you know, with the kind of a pointed, yeah, I, I should really learn the names of these. But we're going to take this uh, shorter edge right here, and that's the side that we're going to be uh, painting our flowers with. So I'm going to take this white, and I'm going to take just a touch of brown on the, on the bottom part of it. If you can see, there's a touch of brown right there at the bottom, not very much. And then we're going to take just a touch of this yellow, uh, just to add some color into it. Grab a little bit more white, just until it's about that full of your uh, ganache. And then we're going to come over here, and we're going to touch our knife to the, to the board, and we're going to kind of start, and then we're going to swoop up, and then come back, curve it around, and pull down. And that's going to be our petal. Okay. Um, oh, someone's asking, uh, sorry, I haven't been paying attention to the questions, but someone's asking what kind of surface this palette is. This is actually, uh, this is actually going to be part of the training. I'm going to, um, this is plexiglass. It is food safe, and uh, I'm going to actually show you guys how to cover a cake with uh, ganache, and it, it uses this plexiglass. So, uh, these these uh, circles. So they're really cool. They're super cool. And um, yeah, I'll, it, in the in the class, if you you know do the yearly membership, then you can come on and see what that's all about. Um, all right. So then we're gonna do another one. We're gonna come down. We're gonna take our palette knife. I've loaded it again, just the same. And we're gonna come up and around, swoop around, and then pull down. And I kind of smudged that one a little bit. But you know what? That's okay because, again, this is we're going for artsy and we're going for not perfect. Okay. And, again, we'll do another one. Um, on the surface of a cake, this is a bit more difficult because you have to get uh, the right kind of <laughs> angle. You have to kind of <laughs> work your way around things. So it is a little bit more difficult, but you you learn to um, uh, either 
change the, the side of your palette knife, you know, depending on which uh, direction you need to go. So we're going to do this one right here again. Just touch it down, swoosh it up, and then pull it back down. And my, my background is, is really pretty solid. And I don't, I don't like that much. But that's, that's because we're going slow here. OK. And then one more. We'll just do five petals. And so you can see that these petals are not perfect at all. They're actually pretty rough, and it's just to give you the idea that there is a flower there. I'm going to um, add one more petal in here because I don't like the way that looks. Okay, added one more petal in there. Okay, so there you go. And then for the center, we're going to add just a touch. We're going to take this little palette knife right here, and we're going to add just a touch of this dark pink, kind of give it a nice little center so that it uh, looks more like a flower. Okay, so that's that one. And then I'm going to show you guys also kind of a daisy type of, of flower. So we're going to take our, our what, wrong one. That same one that I used to do the center. It's the kind of a not, not so pointy angled spatula. And we're going to take our white. And like we did with the leaves, it's kind of the same motion as we did with the leaves. We're going to load it by scraping back and forth like this. And make sure you have a fairly clean edge. And we're going to take it, um, OK, so we have it most of the way down. You don't want it all the way down to the end, but about 3 fourths of the way. And we're going to touch it on here. And we're going to set it down. And then we're going to drag and pull. Okay, And so depending on how much ganache you have on your palette knife, is how thick that petal is going to be. Okay, so we're going to do another one right here. I'm going to do, this is my favorite one, by the way. <laughs> another one right here. And I'm going to try and angle it just a, you know, I kind of uh, flex it a little bit so that we have the petals look like they've got a little bit of shape to them. Okay, and then we're going to come over here. I'm not going to add in all of the petals because we want it to look, again, artsy and look like it's not some child's flower that has to have every petal on it to make it nice and full. We want it to look like it's kind of uh, falling open. Okay, and then we're going to do this one right here. All right, so you guys can see we've got our two flowers there. And, again, we're going to add in a center here to the center of this one. Yeah, that's too much. Okay, a little bit of pink on the center. And there you go. Those are our flowers. So this is basically the idea behind our ganache palette knife painting. I think it's uh, pretty fun. It's very uh, contemporary, you know, very artsy. I, I really like it. I think it's a really fun effect for a cake and something that isn't, I, I Personally, haven't seen it very much or at all on cake, so I don't know if I'm just not opening my eyes and seeing things. But <laughs> but yeah, okay. So um, I wanted to uh, talk to you guys about our our class a little bit and um, our well our membership a little bit more. Uh, we are going to be doing a giveaway. Uh, I hope that you guys all entered for that giveaway. Uh, we will be pulling a name very shortly. And, um, yeah, I covered that pretty fast, didn't I? That went pretty quickly. So there you go. That's the idea behind it. Okay, so let me look and see if we have any questions here. Um, Um, someone says, if you did this straight on the cake, there would be holes not covered. Uh, yeah, you you wouldn't want to do this on an empty cake. Uh, you you would want to have this covered with something, either ganache or, well, I don't know about buttercream. Mm, I don't know. Uh, so either ganache or fondant, you know, something like that. Um, you probably could do it on buttercream. Just make sure your buttercream is nice and chilled first. 
so um, someone's asking, did I start with white ganache and add color? Uh, most of this was added color. Uh, I had some pink uh, candy melts, and so I um, made the pink and I made some white. And, and I made some chocolate. I, I have some chocolate at home. I didn't you know, use that much here. But um, so I did pink and then I added color to it. And just so you know, you can use your basic regular gel colors. Um, you, you don't have to use uh, you know, the chocolate you know, oil-based colors because once you've made it into the ganache, it's already kind of seized up. And so there's, it, it already has done its job of, of seizing and, and coming into just uh, you know, what it's going to be. And so adding a, a water-based color isn't going to hurt it. Uh, just know that it does thin it down a little bit, but it's, it's not going to hurt it to add some color to it. Okay. Um, let's see. Trying to find some more questions. Sorry, I wasn't looking at them throughout the training because I was focused on this. Um, another, another same question. Do you put fondant on the cake before doing this or do it straight on the cake? Um, I think I addressed that. Um, and um, someone talking about the focus going in and out. Yeah, that's the, the nature of this camera. It, it just kind of tries to adjust to where I am. And um, yeah, let's see. Oh, someone asked what brand the hair dryer is. Conair. Um, it is. Yeah, Conair brand. It's got the different settings so that you can have a low heat, a high heat, and you can have you know the different uh, um, air levels. And I, I for cake stuff, I always leave it on low. Uh, I I don't think it needs to be high when you're um, using a hair dryer and stuff. And the hair dryer is good for several things. You you can use it for um, uh, if you have this one that has the different settings, you can actually use it in the, on the cool setting to help set chocolate. Uh, you can use it on the cool setting to help set um, isomalt. Uh, you, you, using um, like a really cool air on isomalt will crack it, but this is just kind of a regular, you know, kind of a cool air, so it works. Um, let's see. Um, could this be done with buttercream? Yes, it can be done with buttercream. And um, it actually works pretty well with buttercream because then you don't have to worry about the heats and the consistencies and all that. You, you do need to get the consistency right, um, but it doesn't, it, it's not something that has to be, uh, yeah. I, I like it with the ganache. I like the way that the ganache feels. And, and tastes and stuff, so I think it's cool that way. But yes, you could do this with buttercream. Make sure that your buttercream doesn't have you know, all the air bubbles in it. If you do have air bubbles in your buttercream, you can just take your, um, your palette knife and just kind of slide along the buttercream. Kind of Here, I'll show you with the ganache. It doesn't have that, but you just kind of take it and kind of slide along like that, and that will kind of smooth out all of your air bubbles so that when you gather it up, it's all, you know, nice and, and smooth. No bubbles. Uh, someone says, kind of like toll painting? Uh, kind of. It's, it's more of a, its own technique, this palette knife painting. Um, so with, with toll painting, you do use, uh, you know, kind of the um, acrylic paints, which are somewhat like this. Uh, in, in texture, but they're a little bit softer, and so they don't build up quite as much as the, um, like an oil-based paint or um, like a ganache or buttercream would. Okay. Uh, someone says, how will this withstand the hot Las Vegas summer? It really won't very well. <laughs> uh, if you're if you're going to be doing this and it's going to be outside, I 
personally, I don't know if I would even recommend it, but maybe royal icing. Uh, royal icing would probably work with this and, and stand up to the Vegas weather. Um, me personally, I would just say eh, it has to be inside because that's most of my cakes in general. So, uh, let's see. Um, Um, someone says, is this a background before she makes the flowers? Yes, um, that was what I was doing. I'm sure that you got that throughout. Uh, sorry, I didn't explain that very well. Uh, let's see. <laughs> someone says, uh, sounds like Bob Ross. <laughs> Happy little tree. Happy little flower in here. Yeah, I like I like Bob Ross. He's one of my favorites. Okay, um, trying to think of if there's anything else. I, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get through all these questions. Um, okay, can't wait to try this technique. I'm happy that you're excited to try it. Um, again, royal icing. Someone asked if it could be done with royal icing. Uh, yes, it could probably be done with royal icing. Again, you need to work fast. So. Uh, it can't be heated up and reworked like the ganache can, so you have to work fast with it. We uh, hope that you come and take advantage of, of the membership. It's going to be uh, uh, a lot of this type of stuff, a lot more in depth, and uh, it, it's going to be just it's going to be really cool. And I hope you guys really enjoy it. And um, yeah. I don't see any more questions, and I think we've covered everything. Again, uh, the website for uh, the link for the membership is cakefood.com forward slash r forward slash gold. Uh, so yeah, congratulations to Bear Bearlicious Dishes. That's really cute. Uh, so congratulations. Uh, we will send you an email on how to go ahead and, and take advantage of that. And uh, yeah. I hope you guys uh, come and join us. Okay, uh, thank you very much, and we will see you guys all next week. Bye.